so um I, I i'm just a marxist and i saw you were having conversations with people about you know leftism and, and various shit like that so i kind of wanted to just talk a bit about uh capitalism in particular really and like why why i think that's a bit shitty so you, you down for that yeah i'm down for that hit me up <laughs> cool cool okay so um yeah yeah let's just jump right into it then so there there are a few i i think there are like two main uh avenues to kind of go down uh and, and we'll explore both but i think a, a really big one is capitalism in regards to like personal freedom and, and things like that and like free time and, and stuff and how it kind of limits those those aspects so we, we can kind of start off with that take my free sub um, cuck lord less than really three quickly just like so so we make sure we're on the same page and all uh like uh, definitions of capitalism uh so just what i'm working with at like the most stripped down fundamental level um marxists generally tend to think of these kind of things as like modes of production like how we actually produce our goods why we're producing them etc etc so uh capitalism then in, in its most simple form would be producing goods to be exchanged for a profit like right? is that fair enough yeah cool cool okay so if we take that then 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 we can say that you know whenever people get together in society to you know in the workplace or whatever to, to try and make something the the purpose of their production is already being like predetermined uh to be the expansion of, of capital and like to make profits and stuff okay Bye. Uh, so that that's like yeah the the the, the primary driving factor in in why in, in production uh and why we do that so if we take a look at that from the perspective of like the individual worker that goes there then we can kind of break it up, up into into two sections right so First off, the, the workers working there because they need to get their wage to you know cover their rent and food and support their family and stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and the whole day that they're working there, they're producing goods that are going to get sold. That's going to make money, uh, pay off the wages that the employer's given them and the raw materials and blah blah blah. Uh, but there's a certain point, right, that Wowie. the workers already done enough labor for that day to like effectively quote unquote like pay off their wages for that day mm -hmm. and and the raw materials and everything they've like broken even so they've they've sustained themselves right but now capitalism is the one mode of production in history where that's not where the working day ends right because if you if you just went home after just sustaining yourself well then you haven't made any profit so you can't now invest uh business and you'll be driven out by people who are investing back into business and expanding so now after after you break even and you've made enough to sustain yourself you're now uh, producing what we call surplus value right uh -huh. and then you're just this is just pure profit pushing that out um and and that's essentially you know your, your working day is being extended to as long as like is reasonable possible like really it, it revolves around how strong like labor movements and stuff are but really just as long as you can get it to make as uh, enough as much money as possible to expand as, as much as possible so it eats into your actual like free time that you have to do whatever it is you want to do with your life so that that's like a pretty uh i guess self-evident way in which capitalism is very antithetical to like free time and and, and things like that and sure so i follow you right up until you said capitalism antithetical to free time like i mean like you can still work like a lower amount of hours and still have free time fta s and socialism with you well i mean sorry i'm sorry, sorry so, uh, i'm somebody don't understand something um yeah i mean like you um you, you can still have like um uh, or yeah and also we can talk about everybody um, you can still have like a free time in a capitalist system and you can still have no time in a socialist system. I, I mean like Well, I mean, I'd obviously disagree with having no free time in a socialist system, but we won't delve into that Well, but um, you can admit that it's possible that in a socialist system You wouldn't have any free time if you still had well, to it, it really it really depends like how we're defining socialism and stuff But that's like a whole other thing. So it's just okay in any non-utopian non-fantastical like, yeah, version where people work two hours yeah, a day yeah, yeah, that yeah, in yeah. most I, implementations I know, of socialism sure. people are still working. Yeah, well, I, well it's not a, it's not a yeah i'm just saying that like in, in capitalism like you can spend all your time working but you could also not spend all your time working as well right like if you work like i think i think like 40 hours a week is probably okay if you're able to sustain yourself off of that it's eight hours a day monday through friday like it's probably like an okay amount of work if we could do less that'd be great but um well no because you're missing my point right so like yeah you you can just work less but if you only work as much as you you know need to sustain yourself then you're going to be out competed by those who aren't just sustaining themselves but also expanding so you are losing a potential a large amount of potential free time just to stay competitive in the in the workforce and the the specific amount that you're working i mean you know when when industrial capitalism first took off ridiculous hours like 
you know, 12 at a minimum. Uh, and it's only because of like centuries of, of labor. Wait, what do you, wait, like wait, 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 what do you mean? If you work less, you're less competitive. There are people that are scheduled for like 34 hours or 24 hours or what do you mean? Well, I mean, if we're talking about like, you know, it, 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 factories competing in a market producing goods, okay, right? Yeah. If, 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 if now let's assume that they're at the same productivity, so they're not like producing way more in, in a short amount of time. Mm -hmm. uh, so if they, if one of these factories is only working to sustain itself, mm -hmm. is like paying off its raw materials, paying everybody's means of subsistence, then the other factories can just work that additional amount, produce more goods, sell those goods off, get money, uh, and, and then they're able to expand, start undercutting this, this original factory and drive it out of the market altogether. So now this original factory doesn't even None of those people even have jobs at all, so they're not sustaining themselves. Oh, sure. In that sense, that. sure. Yeah. 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 So, so again, it, it's it's a way that like, this is the first time in human history where we no longer just need to worry about getting food for ourselves and our family. It's now we're you know playing this social game with other people, which again eats up into our free time in in a, in, a, in a very large way. So, so I, I, don't, I don't like the way these are connected because you say eats into our free time in a very large way. Like slavery and serfdom probably didn't give you like a fuck ton of free time to do like what you would want to or to pursue interests that you'd want to. Well, yeah, you know, it, it's interesting you bring that up. I mean, slavery, yeah, that's, you know, it, if you are a slave, then you're treated as a tool. That's different. But if you think about feudalism, actually, uh, now, <laughs> not, not a proponent of feudalism. Really? Because it sounds like we're about to say, well, in feudalism, they actually had a lot more free time, but to do no, what? No, 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 no. That's, that's not what I was going to say at all. No. Okay. What I was going to say, though, is that, yeah, well, obviously, you know, they didn't have technologies, but at, what they did have is they only worked to sustain themselves. And then built into that, obviously, they worked uh, to pay off the taxes that, of their lords. But essentially, as long as they were fed, as long as their lords were fed, that was it. They were done. And this still took a very long amount of time because it was... Very old, you know, very long ago. Not much uh, technology, so farming did take a while. But nonetheless, it wasn't a, a, a matter of once everybody's been fed, you're still working more anyway. But af after that point, you're done. And that that's, okay. So that's I'm I mean. I'm gonna concede immediately. I might be a total fucking moron, but like are, were, under feudalism, weren't you essentially like like a like a, not like a slave, but kind of weren't you for like whatever royal family or whatever like noble family you worked for? Like you had to live yeah, there, you yeah. had to work there. So weren't they scraping no, yeah, like sucks. the surplus shit off of your labor? Except they just used it to feed their family and shit the same way that a capitalist would, but for profit. Yeah, yeah don't, totally. But then um, I built into capitalism as well is then this element of expansion and you didn't have that in feudalism is what i'm saying so like yeah the capitalist needs to be sustained as well the lord needs to be sustained as well that's all built in but that's still that like if you want to call it quota that once you hit you're, you're done and that's what how it works under feudalism okay so capitalism yeah. is bad because it drives to expand itself which leads people to working more uh well i mean of. i'd be precarious about saying it's bad because uh Marxists tend to take on a more, like, a less moralistic approach. Okay. Uh, I, I think that, you know, uh, the, the wonders of capitalism have, have been brilliant because, because of this mass expansion that, that it drives, you know, it forces everybody to do, really. We now have a, a large abundance of a lot of resources uh, that, you know, we, we would never have been be able to dream of in feudalism. It's just the Marxist position then is there's a certain point where capitalism has then played its part. It, it, it's done this expansion to the point where we have enough like technological progress, we have enough resources where now we no longer need this kind of social structure pushing us onwards at, at all points in time. So that's that's the kind of, uh, that, that I think that's like a very basic point about how capitalism, yeah, it, it, it's pushing us to work more than we would otherwise have to. Okay, but like, it seems like if we accept this premise that like well we shouldn't have to work this much just to remain competitive with other people like the only way to realistically implement this is in one of two ways either one you have to shut down like our entire trade system because otherwise other countries will outcompete us or two you would need like literally a global socialist movement for where everybody can agree to not like outcompete one one another so that it's not like a race to this capitalist bottom or whatever yeah well i mean you know uh uh, you are touching on some interesting points there that obviously I'd this zoomer on. hasn't read but about the stakhanovite yeah, movement be a, a pretty global thing you can't have kind of half socialism half capitalism it's got to be like constructed in such a way that taking your products to a market to sell them wouldn't even make sense in the first place but again, yeah so like how do we get what is the way that we move towards a global socialist movement that that is the million dollar question but uh it is uh it, it's not something that 
I, I don't think there's one definitive answer that you give. I think it's very contextual. And the reason that is, is now I was hoping to get into this from a different angle, which I'll hopefully be able to come back to. But uh, essentially, you know, economic well, crash is built into capitalism, like fundamentally. And I can explain why, and I would actually really like to explain that as well. That's the kind of second point I was going to make. Um, but if we just deal with that for a moment. So, yeah, that, that's built into capitalism. So every, you know, it's roughly 10 years, isn't it? Uh, yeah, that, that you, have, you have an economic crash. Mm -hmm. This obviously causes a detriment in material conditions for everybody. And as we see even right now, you know, you have uh, people being pushed to further extremes on both the right and left because they become more unsatisfied with the society in which they live. <laughs> um, uh, and, and, you know, that, that, that causes tensions. The system further breaks down. Eventually, you get these, these like, what are called, like, revolutionary periods where you have the potential for people to rise up, completely overthrow the system. And either, you know, that can either happen from the perspective of progress, where we can then try to build on capitalism to kind of have all these lovely resources without having to uh, continually fulfill this, this uh, quota of expansion. Or you can have it from the other perspective of, like, a brutalist fascist dictatorship which wants to shut uh you know what uh, essentially save capitalism from this idea of progress um so the, the the question of how then you actually get to socialism it's again it, it you can't really say like off the bat for any given time because it's very um dependent on the the context under which these economic crashes and then extremist movements are being brought up in so it, it really is you have to look at the the conditions you're given, and if there is a, a you know, if there is an opportunity for a, a genuine socialist movement to, to take control uh, and a, on a roughly global scale as well, then that's perfect. Obviously, a lot of times in history that hasn't, and you've got fascism instead. Has so this ever it, it, happened? In hi so, like, you're talking about like this would have to be like a literal like a totalitarian esque or like authoritarian-esque like socialist takeover, because not only would you need to have a socialist takeover in one country, you would have to force through threat of violence like socialism onto these other countries as well. Otherwise, they would just become capitalist and grow incredibly wealthy, outcompeting all the other people in the global economy, right? Yeah, well, I mean, you know, it's, it's, just, it's just the same way that liberalism came about, this, this authoritarian <laughs> revolution that overthrew the monarchy, you know. Okay. But, but I mean, yeah, I mean... <laughs> I mean, what? I mean, this is like super fantastical. Like, what am I supposed to say? I mean, like, if you we could do it, it's great. Well, but I like, mean, we, you're, saying, that, you're not, saying that we need like a I'm violent not... global socialist revolution where everybody, man, you guys like can't even get along with each other on like Facebook. Like, how are you gonna like <laughs> coordinate? And not to mention the fact that you lefties like, or I keep saying you lefties, like, like lefties like kill themselves like as soon as they get into power anyway, where they start purging like other leftist groups. How could they possibly enforce this on like a global well, that's, scale? Uh, you know, I mean, this is really delving into territory. I wasn't really hoping to. Okay, get sure. To we can back up from that, yeah, but, sure. but just I, I will say the whole purging thing and the whole all of that. I mean, that you only actually see that in like Stalinism and stuff like that. There are countless other revolutionary examples where you don't get those kind of things because they're different contexts, they're different people, and, and things like okay, that. Okay, but, but like, I, and anyway. I, my history in China is way weaker. But wasn't like the the Cultural Revolution and shit in the People's Republic of China? Like, didn't that have like some? Aspects oh yeah, China of, was a mess. Chi China was a okay. So mess. like our <laughs> largest examples of this like socialist idea working. Like, I don't really care much about like the four years that Catalonia was socialist. Like, I don't know if I can like extrapolate that to a larger global setting. Yeah, and I'm not saying you should, right? And I'm not saying that's like the the example we should draw from. But what I am saying is that it does it does kind of show that it's not an inherent part of socialism or anything, and it definitely can't be an inherent part. Of revolution because again the liberalism that we live under today came about through this exact same way so you'd have to show somehow why it's communism that's special that gets this but personally again when i, I think when we've seen examples where that hasn't happened even if they were small and short-lived i think that does kind of go against this idea that it, it, it's inherently built into a communist revolution but but again this is this is like way way off so okay yeah i I, I like to um, let, let's go out to, to talking about uh, capitalism because I mean you know you, you say you're a man that's interested in, in practical things right so this, mm -hmm. this is why I thought this might be more interesting to you because we're talking about the the you know the real world and shit so okay so so we, we've kind of covered one way in which uh, you know cap capitalism uh, eats into our, our free time is making us work more than we would necessarily need to and I think a very interesting but initially counterintuitive way that it, it does this as well is actually through technological advancement and progress, right? Because, you know, everybody always, always thinks when, when we get new technology, <coughs> sorry, that, that we're going to, um, uh, it's going to make our lives so much easier, we're going to have to work less, it, it's going to be great. 
But what we actually see in history is almost the opposite of that is true. It makes some people's lives worse because they get unemployed and it makes the remaining people working. Uh, it actually means they're expected to have a much greater output than they were before the technological advancement. And again, I know this seems counterintuitive. Well, it seems counterintuitive because we're only analyzing one side of this transaction. Like it also provides like a materially huge benefit to the consumers of said goods that are produced by such It such does, firms, right? it very much does. Yeah, and that's great. And I'm gonna, yeah. So if you allow me to set up a scenario okay, yeah, go for through the, the processes of mm -hmm. technological advancement. Yeah, this goes over all of it. So, okay, so yeah, imagine you've got like a handful of businesses, uh, businesses like all producing the same thing and selling in the same market, right? Or say they're producing widgets. So, in in the widget market, you know it, it's roughly been brought down to to a pretty stable price. Everybody's selling at roughly the same cost to the point that if they start undercutting each other, they're going to be eating into their profits too much to be sustainable and stuff, right? Um, so now imagine then that one one of these companies gets their hands on this new on this new widget making machine, and now suddenly they can make widgets uh, at twice the speed. Of, of everybody else and then you know widgets are effectively half the price and, and, and it's great so what happens there then is now now this company can start selling widgets much much cheaper because they can make them much much faster but think about what they're going to be doing at first they're not going to just instantly you know go to the lowest point that they can now go they're going to start undercutting the that existing uh stable cost uh -huh. just enough to start stealing people's biz businesses and and uh, then make loads and loads of profit in, in the in the process. But like with any technological advancement, eventually it does become generalized to the whole industry. So now mm -hmm. everybody has this brilliant widget making machine, uh, and they all start you know undercutting each other uh, more and more until they reach again a new point where if they start undercutting any more, they'll be hurting those profits too much to be sustainable. Mm -hmm. So now now the end result of this is yeah, like you were saying, this is great for the consumer because now widgets are half the price. That that's brilliant. Uh, what what you have to then look at is well now a single widget is yeah half the price of what it originally was. So if we look at this from the perspective of the producer, now they need to be selling two widgets to make the same amount they were before with just one widget. They need to like double their the amount that they're selling in order to just sustain themselves. Right? Th okay. This is what we generally call the rate of profit to fall. The rate that you're actually making on each individual widget has fallen, so you need to sell a greater volume to just keep up. Mm -hmm. That's maybe even more because now you spent a bunch of money on machines and stuff. Okay. So the the essentially then the, so these workers with these new machines, yeah, they need to be producing double the amount to to um, keep up with things. Okay. So already we're seeing an example of where, you know, when when capitalism when technological advancement comes under capitalism it doesn't reduce the amount of time we have to work it just um, not necessarily the amount that we have to sell that's not necessarily true um one of the reasons why it doubles the amount that you have to sell is because your worker your workforce becomes more efficient as well so like producing like 10 times like even if we say 10 times or we'll, we'll be simple producing two times as many widgets might still be an easier job than producing one times as many before or you would expect that the effort put into producing x number of widgets or or um whatever the increased amount of widgets is is going to be about equal to the time spent to produce a single widget before right but you're able to do it more now because you have more efficient capital that allows you to do that it's not like somebody is literally spending twice the effort that to, to do something to produce twice as the amount of widgets right the, the yeah, effort no, should be roughly are. the same okay yeah well i'm not, I'm okay, not sure. talking about effort yeah okay sure but like it's it's not like um it's not like this person has to work more to produce more widgets they're just working the same right yeah exactly but okay but here's the thing we've had this this hot like this this machine that half the time it takes to make widgets but we're still working the exact same amount doesn't that seem absurd? No, like it seems good. The amount. Well, no, because then the consumer wouldn't see a reduction in the cost of widgets. If you just had like, if you kept like all your costs the same or whatever, and now you can make the widgets twice as fast, but the factory is only on for half the time. Well, then you're still paying the same price as a consumer at the end of the day for it. Well, yeah, but this, 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 but this gets into the, the fact of like having, you know, having to buy these things at all just to keep up with the uh just just to <laughs> sustain themselves yeah but right? there are like other but, but positive now, now that 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 point Wait, no, no, to no, sustain no. themselves wow. has been halved so it could, it could very well be be halved but it could be, but there are other detrimental effects that could happen as a result of this. For instance, let's say that somebody could create widgets, okay? But they can't actually make these widgets if widgets weren't like under a certain price, right? Maybe the idea that factories are creating so many widgets now and these widgets have become so affordable to consumers that this person can now buy it and they can open their own factory producing widgets that need like a large number of widgets in order to work. Well, now you've like created parallel industries, right? This is like specialization of labor and everything that increases when we um, w when we make our labor more efficient and when we have different people producing different things. Like, So theoretically, you could be creating more jobs 
jobs this way or creating other beneficial parts to the economy as well, right? Like, Yeah, I mean, I don't see why you couldn't, but that doesn't, you know, I, I, I don't see how that negates my point. What because is is the is your I'm point ultimately? Is you're just saying like just... people shouldn't have to work because the economy has become more efficient, or yeah, like okay, the yeah, because then your because sense. then your society sucks it's... shit. When you have free time to do whatever you want, I don't want don't free time if I have no computers, no cell phones, no cool instruments. I'm not, no, dude, I'm not saying we're not we're going to have technology, but we process. wouldn't. If somebody want no. Listen, if we someone wants to make wadgets, then then you know. People are gonna get together to make. No, the they won't. They're, it's not gonna to be. It's not gonna be possible to do Why so. Why not? Because the because all the widget makers aren't gonna be producing widgets at the reduced cost. But now 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 that well they would be because these machines exist. But now there's a no no wait 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 no no they wouldn't be wait wait hold on we have to understand this fundamentally they would not be right because for a given supply uh, there is going to be a price set based on the quantity demanded right if the supply never increases and it remains static throughout the market because you're reducing your working hours um, because you have more efficient machines then the supply of, of widgets is going to remain the same and the price we wouldn't expect to see that price decrease or increase at all it would stay the same so no if somebody wanted to make widgets out of widgets they wouldn't be able to because the widget price would remain roughly static because you're cutting your hours in response to you being more productive with your labor. No, but you're missing the point here because what I'm saying is that the the the, the time it actually makes with this in this isolated example has been half. Now, if there suddenly becomes an additional need for these things, then yeah, you can put in the time to, to make more, but now you're just, the level of sustainability is just being raised. But that's, that's the point of capitalism. There's always like a no, further need not. for something. No, 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 because the point of capitalism is to go way further than the point of sustainability. And this actually comes back into the point I was trying to make. Wait, 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 right? wait, 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 what do you mean by sustainability? Expand. I'm sorry, I Again, just want to make making, sure. Making, making the amount that we actually need. But, that, that, you, you yeah, know, but if you make need. more things, you can do more shit with it. Yeah, so if somebody, but you don't just make a bunch of shit and then go, okay, what do I want to do with this now that I've made it? You go, I want to make this, I need this much shit, and now there's a need for that. That's what I'm saying. Well, like, okay, hold on, fuck, this is, hold on, this is really it. vague. Okay, let me, let me try to center this. So in a capitalist market, you would expect capital to flow to the areas of the market where profit can be made, right? That's generally how capital works, right? Capital yeah. flows to parts of the market where money can be made. So if you can, if your widget production is more efficient, right, you can probably have a smaller margin on the profits that you make on said widgets. So you can produce more such that your profits remain at some level, right? So you can produce way more widgets, people will buy them, maybe they reduce costs, but because you're producing so much more and your costs are decreased because your labor is so much more efficient, you can continue to produce more right so like even if your factory worked making 100 widgets it could still work making 10,000 widgets right you yeah, just i know but yeah. like this you don't need to is what i'm saying though. you don't I, need I to but like like, like the, the problem that i have with you? this why would you because then you can do more cool shit in society yeah i Right, like the just, problem is that like, here, well, no, no, so like, like, here's my problem. My problem is that you want to stop this. It sounds like you want to stop this right now because you're happy with what we have in society right now. But with this no, type of, no, no, God, no, no, no. Okay. Because <laughs> it sounds like if I would apply this type of thinking 200 years ago, we wouldn't have a microprocessor. Nobody would have ever like created more things. It, it, nobody would have ever like, we would have, we would be working like 30 minutes a day because like, because capital becomes so efficient, right? Because like we had looms that, that would help you like sew things instead of having people do everything by hand, that people would just completely stop working. And then we never would have advanced to the society that we have today because, oh, well, we've got enough shit now. Like why would we need to make this thing cheaper or make these goods more affordable to other, you know, sectors of the economy or to consumers? Yeah, no, that's, that's, that's not what I'm saying at all. I mean, you, and again, if you want to talk about it 200 years ago, this comes to the point I was making again, where capitalism, it, it, it has its job of, of industrializing society. But once we are industrialized, you know, that's it. And I'm not saying once we're industrialized, we stop having technological advancement, not at all. What I am saying, though, is that we no longer t need to go that extra step to fulfill the needs of capital, to, expel to, to fulfill expansion, is what I'm saying, right? And, and again, coming back to this point of, of expansion, when we go back to, you know, you, you've halved the amount of time to make widgets, and now you need to sell double the amount just to make the same amount. Well, this, there's, there's this problem here, right? Because technological process, it keeps happening over time, and this gets, keeps getting employed in production. So every time this happens, the rate of profit falls and falls and falls. And by the way, quick side point, uh, I, I want to say the falling rate of profit has been empirically proven. This isn't just theory. This is like, this is a, I can link you a study if you like. Where what do you mean by fallen actually, rate of profit? The rate of profit that you're making on average in uh, for, for goods in an economy. Uh -huh. That sounds yeah, good. That sounds like capitalism working, right? No, because here's the thing. Because like I've said, once the rate of profit falls, now again, it's great for the consumer, but once the rate of profit falls, then you need to sell more and more and more. 
But if there's no supply to to take that, then you have a crisis of overproduction. You have too many things. Fuck! I hold on, hold on. We got. Oh fuck! We would have to go back and like do this. Uh, like so. I'm sorry. My understanding is that if there is very high profit in an industry, there's a market failure there. You never want like capital in a society should always flow to the places where there is an excess of profit until that excess disappears. If there is some company that is highly profitable, you would expect other companies to step in and compete against them, and you would expect to see that profit fall. Right? You you never. There should never be some part of an uh, of an industry that is highly profitable because other companies should step in profits should be reduced until the company is making the minimum so that consumers aren't getting fucked on prices like that that's what it that's not what i'm talking about though yeah okay i don't understand that i guess i'm getting confused on what you mean by profits because are falling the, the rate of profit right? mean, so the what, amount that you're actually making back on each individual widget item. is decreasing oh okay yeah well, okay yeah, so and why now, does that matter here's the problem here's the problem so when, when that keeps falling and falling and falling, you need to sell more and more and more to compensate that fact. And, and, you're, you, know, and, and you're, you, you have to think of all these tricks like advertising and planned obsolescence and things like that to get people to buy more things than they otherwise would. That only works for a certain amount of time. Eventually, people only need a certain amount of widgets, especially if you've got like but five that... different companies competing against each other making these widgets. So when people stop needing widgets, they stop buying widgets, the economy crashes because you have people continually expanding continually trying to push out more every time there's technological advancement they need to need now need to but make I, this wouldn't more. just be like a flash crash there would be some like line where it's like okay well if we produce widgets past this certain point people are no longer purchasing them so then we scale back production well that's what's happened in pretty much almost all economic crashes uh, and you know great depression is a great example like where, where it was a crisis of overproduction you had this massive economic boom like and cars are an example you know people only needed so many cars but as soon as people stopped buying cars, the economy crashed. I need to read more, but I don't. I don't think that characterization is correct. That li it was literally. I'm you're telling me. So you're saying that, that the Great simple. Depression was like caused just by overproduction? I'm not saying it's that simple, but it is like a very important factor. And the point is, is that this relationship is built into capitalism because no matter what you do, whenever there's technological process, uh, progress people are going to use that to try and make more profits in order to cut their competition. So this this relationship is always going to take place. So you're Then why haven't we had multiple great depressions? Well, we have we have had multiple economic crashes, haven't we? I'm yeah, but I don't think that like the dot com the, boom was like comparable to the great depression. I'm not saying they they're, they're all like you know in the exact same way, but I'm not I'm also not saying that they're all the great depression. I'm sure, but I don't think that I don't think there's anything an inherently horrible about like a boom bust cycle. Like sometimes the economy uh, is doing well. Is there not? I mean, when when you have these terrible busts, people can't eat. You have radicalization of people. I, okay, I'm not trying to, to downplay like some of the problems that exist in the United States, but I don't think that the dot com bubble had like th tens of thousands of people starving on the streets. Like some people lost no, their jobs, I mean, some people no, lost their houses. It was do, sad, but, but like. Yeah, but but the point is is that eventually this 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 scale must at some point be reached. It, it, it's a very like it, it's a very intricate system of like you know what the magnitude as to which it happens and why it happens. But the point is that it always does happen and that it always does produce those conditions for uh, people to to be radicalized and then try and topple the system, be it to the far right or the far left. And this is this is again this is built into capitalism because it, it's a pretty simple explanation i think of what i've laid out like there isn't anything abnormal about this competition with these companies making widgets that, that i've explained so this 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 is something that you cannot get around in in a capitalist system okay and, and then what's the alternative <clears throat> that you propose well i'm i'm proposing that when these these cra these inevitable crashes do happen that we lean towards the side of socialism rather than the side of fascism. What is that? And well, first of all, nothing that we're talking about so far has anything to do with fascism. I, I don't know where that came from. It doesn't not because, like I've said, economic crashes, radicalization, this is where fascism comes from. Where that's like a way off tangential point. I don't, I don't I mean, think it's another. It's another point, but like you, you wanted to clarify on that. So, do you think we were more or less fascist after the Great Depression? After the Great Depression, there were more fascists. Because but as a whole, has the country become more fascist over time or less fascist I'm not, over I'm not, time? I'm not saying, I'm not talking about the, the, the government itself. I'm talking about radicalization of individuals that form political movements which threaten the government itself. Because, you know, every revolution happens after some kind of catastrophe. Sure, where but like the, these catastrophes aren't necessarily tied to... to economic systems it, like re, like no not always sometimes it's like the first world war and things like that but sure or if, like geopolitical instability or whatever or yeah but here's the thing 
this a type of crisis is built into capitalism so capitalism is always at some point producing the conditions for its own downfall that's what i'm saying there may be other external factors which which you know can can also do it but what i'm saying is it's also an inherent trait of capitalism so it's always going to be have, have this unstable element it, it, it's self-defeating in that way because what, what's great about this sure i understand this, this is, is a marx talking the, about the inherent contradiction of capitalism i understand right this is yeah, why it'll the, inevitably fail th well, this is also what, i just want to say this is also like capital under perfect conditions this is one it naturally trends towards if left unfettered like this is just sure of course know. but that's why nobody has a completely unfettered capitalist system nowhere in the world or at least i understand no, it exists you can't you can't regulate this out unless you want to stop okay well then what's the alternative technological... because every socialist system has miserably fucking failed like in a, in a much quicker amount of time than like the capitalist systems we have right now like i'm not necessarily talking about the alternative i'm just trying to prove that capitalism is inherently unstable and is inherently self-defeating that's what all i'm trying to say and i'm also trying to say that it is a detriment to our freedom and time so that yeah what i'm saying is, is that this period of, of which it's done it, it, it served its purpose okay has, has passed and now it's pretty much just de detriment we, we don't need to live with any of this detriment anymore. So what I'm saying is that the alternative it, it is simply stripping away these these social structures of capital, which prevent us from enjoying, you know, cause, for, from, from a crisis of overproduction. Like, overproduction should be a brilliant thing. That, that shouldn't be something that crashes our economy, but it is. Uh, technological advancement and automation should be a brilliant thing. But Wait, instead, why, would, why should overproduction to... be a good thing? It's an inefficient allocation of resources. Why should we like that? Well, I'm, obviously, I'm not talking about from efficiency. I'm saying if you compare that to feudalism, where people would starve in the winter because they didn't have enough food, it's a lot, lot better having way too That's much food. That's not than even you know necessarily what to true, though. I'm not I'm trying to nitpick, but like maybe what? overproduction of food destroys land so that in the future we all end up starving to death or causes climate hey, this, change this or global warming. Some, this is semantics from the point I'm trying to make, though, right? Yeah, well, can, no, it's not understand. because like you're, you're, because you're, you, you can't just pick and choose, like, oh, well, overproduction no, can be because good because some people starve, but like overproduction can be really bad, too. Like, I mean, it really depends. Oh. That's not a. I'm not saying we should just intentionally overproduce, dude. All I'm saying is that the point that we it can be a problem, in like not even from external factors, but just from our economy, it can be a problem that we have too much of something is absurd in itself. But I, have, but I, that's my ch I'm challenging that. Forces. <laughs> we have these very powerful productive forces, and we can't even push them to their c capabilities because it would crash our economy, regardless of what we actually. Yeah, want but to I don't do think that's. Them. I don't think that's bad. I don't think that overproduction is necessarily a good thing. That just seems. I don't think that works. I think maybe we could find some areas where overproduction might be a good thing. Like, but but no, I, I think that like depending on how you allocate resources, overproduction would be a really bad thing. If we built a trillion houses and cut down a million forests and polluted the fuck out of everything or destroyed ecosystems, or if we produced like a million clothes or whatever and we ran out of, we ran out of like cotton or other fiber for other things, like I, I don't think that's. I don't think that overproduction is ever, I don't think I would ever say or let somebody say like, overproduction should be a good thing. That just seems like a really weird statement to make. I, I really feel like you're missing my point. I wasn't trying to say overproduction is a good thing. I thought what you, I'm okay, I'm sorry, because I thought I specifically heard you say overproduction should be a good thing. I'm saying it should be a good thing that we have the, the capabilities to have massive resource abundance, that everybody should be fed without question that there should be shelter for everybody and things like that that's what i'm saying okay we have the we have the possibility to do that but it doesn't it doesn't work within our capitalist system. well yeah but the problem is that like we have the possibility to do that with the way that our economy is organized right now i don't know if we have the possibility to do that if we have a system where everybody gets everything for free and everything is like allocated by the government or some central planning system and you're not necessarily advocating for these i don't know where you fall on this but like under the capitalist system right now it seems like we produce enough where we could theoretically feed everybody and house everybody i agree with that but that doesn't mean that we just need to leave capital and, and all the production will stand as is because I don't know if that production would still be organized in a way that can do such without like profit incentives being there or without individual actors in a market making money or whatever. Like, I, I don't know if that's true or not. It doesn't seem to be. It doesn't seem like any other country has centrally planned their way out of like every basic human need. But I, I mean. Yeah, what, what I'm just saying is that you, you can't just give people their, their food and, and rent. They have to be they have to work for it. They have to. Uh, have the threat of starvation so that they can go to work and you know expand capital for their employer that that's you know that's inherent to capitalism sure but i'm saying that shouldn't be the case I, i'm Why? saying but what's the alternative resources. hold on i'm saying we have enough resources that people don't need to work to sustain themselves yeah but that's people if you want to pause work, but that's if right? you want to pause what we have in society right now and like reduce a lot of the technological innovation that we could have or the types of consumers goods we can have now is to just say like oh this is this is what i said earlier when you, and you disagree with that but i don't understand why when i said it sounds like you just want to pause like where we're at technologically in society like let's just stop here and Not stop working no. and we're good with our current level of achievement like if we would have thought no, this before we, we, we produced the automobile whenever... we would never be driving cars 
so whenever there's a te- when there's whenever there's technological advancement, which generally does happen, like irregardless of capitalism, right? Uh, it, to some degree, like, in the academic sphere, this is done because scientists like to do science and and they come up with these ideas and whatever. But but if the the point is is that from the communist perspective, whenever a new machine in production is made, it, it should be oh now we don't have to work as much to get the same amount that we need to, yes, to live. Yes, which is right? like pausing but society. But that's not what happens. No. Yes. <laughs> okay, if society needs more, then they can make more. But if they don't need more, then they don't make more. You're yes. saying that in order to have progress, society needs to continually be overproducing, continually expanding in order to have any type of technological process at all. But they're, they're, they're two separate things. I, I don't, don't think so. If you, ha- if you have the ability, if you have the ability to produce something more efficiently, then you want your labor to be allocated into different sectors, right? So for instance, under NAFTA, we exported a lot of our manufacturing to Mexico. But this doesn't mean that manufacturing disappeared in the United States. It allowed some people to further specialize in other industries. In your world, it seems like if we're able to manufacture something more efficiently, oh, well, then those manufacturers just stop working. But we don't want them to stop working. We want them to specialize and work in something else. This is where a lot of our advancement comes from. Oh, well, of course. I'm not saying I'm not saying these people are just going to go home and play fucking video games. The rest well, of wait. Lives. So then, what do we disagree? Then you want them to continue working? I'm I'm saying that. Well, if we want to get into specifically like work under communism and stuff, the way we even view work to begin with should, should be changed. I think it should be you, you should do something because it's what you want to do. Essentially, it, it's fulfilling to you. And this whole like distinction between having to be employed, working for somebody else, working to expand capital. What if people don't want to be like chemical engineers or some of these more boring or like pharmacologists or whatever, these jobs that like society needs? How do you, how do you fill out every single job if you're not doing it with a market? That's, that's not really something that I feel could really be a problem. It's, that's not how things work. Come on, this, wait, wait, this is bullshit, dude. Come on. You think that every single job that we need filled in society, everybody would just magically sort themselves into the exact way that we need labor allocated? Not magically, dude. Obviously, obviously there's going to be some kind of planning that happens. I'm not saying central Stalinist planning or some shit, but I'm also not trying to specify specifically what it is because it's not really my, hold on. It's not really my job to say specifically what a future society may or may not want to do. This right? is such a because... weasley defense. Hold on. Okay, so I'm no, asking no, no, you. No, 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 no. Because here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing. When peasants started overthrowing the, the feudal lords and stuff, did they have a grand plan of how capitalism was going to work? No, they didn't even have the word fucking capitalism. They, they yeah, just, but these guys okay, weren't did... sitting in their college classrooms at 24, like with the luxury of thinking up whatever economic system they want. You should be able to answer like a I'm pretty simple question. I'm not thinking up an question. economic system, dude. Okay, well, like <laughs> that's the point. That, that that's what you that's what you seem to be misunderstood on. You're trying to pin me down on these specific. Um, no, 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 wait, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. I'm not trying to pin you down on anything. I'm asking you an incredibly fundamental, basic, super ultra simple question that you should easily, in an instant, you should have an answer to this for me very if I was easily trying to propose if i was trying to pro- propose a grand utopian society i'm not asking for i'm literally just it. asking like how do you decide who works what jobs that is a cr- incredibly easy question if you haven't thought of that i don't know why you would ever talk to anybody how? about any of your ideas like if you don't even answer that well i don't know how people would do their jobs like that's like a pretty important part of what you're proposing you're coming at this from the completely wrong angle dude what, like, what it, is it, the it, angle i'm supposed to come at it from it's more viewing just capitalism as, as a progression of history that eventually I've, like, should hopefully progress into socialism and the specifics of what people like all we can really say about socialism fundamentally right is that it doesn't have a lot of these aspects of capitalism where you're producing for an employer where you, where you have uh, money and markets and that's how things are done the the most basic things you can say is that like it's worker owned means, means of production so the people who are actually working there themselves are going to decide how things are run uh, the society itself is going to decide how things run. Maybe you want to say, oh, I think it would be more likely that people would go with planning and that's how you would allocate labor, whatever. That's not like that's not my interest. It's not what I care about. What I care about is analyzing how capitalism works, analyzing how it's inherently self-defeating and analyzing what it must then inherently follow for, to. Because it's the thing, just from these like most fundamental, fundamental basic definitions, I mean, the one I gave from capitalism earlier, right, about how it's just producing things to be sold. Can we then from there speculate about all the possible differences? You know, because the US and Saudi Arabia are both capitalism, but are they in any way the same society? No, we can't We can't theorize how things like that are gonna pan out. It's gonna be 
radically different from context to context. Place to okay, place. that's fine. But and I'm going to sit not, here and I'm going to defend capitalism to the death before switching to some system where we have no fucking idea about how any part of society There's will ever be organized. There's never any fucking idea how anything is going to be. But that's not true. Even from it the is, even from the movement of feudalism. To about. No, that's not true. Capital. It wasn't like one night, like all over the world, people flipped a switch and just became capitalists. There were tons of market structures that evolved over time, where some of the fucking workers on some of the serfdoms or whatever would go out and they would sell their crops to other people. Or you saw these smaller markets that would pop up in different areas that were tried and true, and then eventually that grew into a larger thing. This is not true that feudalism overnight just magically became capitalism out of thin air. Like, these ideas were tried and tested over time, and sometimes they grew into, like, larger systems, and then people started to go with it. Much less, like, and we've tried it with socialism, but every single time that's been tried, it's miserably fucking failed. Now, whether that's because central planning doesn't work, or because capitalist countries are too competitive and imperialize and fuck these countries over for whatever reason, but, like, no, I, I disagree with this characterization that capitalism popped into thin air like the Big Bang and just took over the whole world. I don't think that happened. That's not what I was trying to say, though. Okay, I, it sounded like you said that capitalism, that's how capitalism came about, that it just popped into nothing and nobody had any no, idea how no, it worked. No. What, what I was saying is that there wasn't a grand plan from, from the people involved in you know, abolishing feudalism. Sure, like, there wasn't a right, there, there wasn't a, a grand way. plan initially, but there were incremental st steps taken towards yeah, yeah, it yeah, to yeah. make and, it work. And it would be the same thing. It would be like a very similar thing with socialism. Yeah, but when I asked you earlier about we're like... We're not going to overnight exist with socialism. But, but the people the people who then carry out these revolutions or whatever, or maybe it won't be revolution. I'm not necessarily, I mean, personally... Well, but it, it, it sounds like it, because earlier anyway. you told me that for this to work, there literally has to be a global authoritarian socialist revolution. Every other country has to be forced to act yeah, in a socialist I mean, manner. That, 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 that's a, yeah, you're right. So there's, that, that's a different topic about how the possibilities of achieving socialism. There are different people like Zizek, for example, if you know him. You know, he doesn't, he, he's very much a Marxist, but he doesn't necessarily think that it may be revolution is required or even possible. So he, you know, uh, personally, I think it probably would be required and possible, but if it's not, then, then great, and it can be a more gradual process like that. But really, there's no way to tell until it happens. But, but the point is, is that, again, even with the violent revolution where things are overthrown overnight, that's still not then everyone's going to wake up and it's going to be socialism instantly. You're going to have these transitionary periods of people literally just figuring shit out. And like the most Marx himself ever did in terms of looking at how the society might be run is he would literally just say, okay, I expect that because of the, of the societies that people live in now, and that's 150 years ago, that it would seem like most intuitive for people to do things like use labor vouchers or shit like that, or, or use like some kind of planning system. And he wasn't necessarily talking about central planning back then, obviously. But well, the point is, is that all you can do is you can look at these transitionary periods between modes of productions. You can take guesses about how people are going to figure these things out to remedy the problems that they're faced with and the contradictions that they're faced with in their existing society and where they're going to go from there. That's all you can say. And that, that again, that's not, it's not my place to be this person that can like speak for these people in the future. Okay. Just as much as it is for like the ancient Greeks to speak for the peasants uh, building capitalism. Okay. You alright, man? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm just gonna, I'll keep defending capitalism and patching it until, I guess, it collapses inevitably, but... Well, it, yeah, I mean, like, you can do that, that's great. I mean, uh, I myself, you know, fucking Bernie is cool and everything, or I guess, you know, my equivalent is fucking Corbyn, and I hope they get in, obviously. I'm not gonna, you know, spend my time uh, campaigning for them or anything, but the point is, is that what I'm saying is, is fundamentally built into the system itself, capitalism, like, uh, uh, it is built to fail. And, and the example I gave even is just one very simplified, one example of, of how this, this works. You know, if you actually read capital itself, there are like 11 different built-in ways where capitalism is self-defeating. And it's, you know, it, it, you, I, I fully support you, dude, if you want to say, oh yeah, keep capitalism patched, like don't let people fucking starve in the streets, <laughs> you know, because, because of capitalism and stuff. I, I'm there with you, but, but what I'm trying to get across to you is that eventually it has to go. And it has to be replaced with something else. And we can either choose, we can either choose fascism, which which is you know going to be a response to again the falling society, and it's going to be, try and brutally crush anything that opposes it. Or we, we can either go for socialism, which obviously is going to fight it back against fascism, hopefully, and and hopefully try and build a new society where the things that caused that initial unstability don't exist anymore. That that's all it's going to be. Okay. All right. Do you have any final parting thoughts for us? Um, I'd I'd like to I'd, I'd like to just know at all have, because cause, okay, so I, I've been catching up uh, mm -hmm. on some of these previous debates you've been doing with socialism stuff, and 
uh, obviously you think they've been a mess. I would agree they've been a mess, and you've had some real crazies on it. It's been insane. Um, can I ha can I hit no? Have I in, have I made up for any of these people at all? Have I kind of shown you there might be different avenues or perspectives in socialism, or maybe it's not as fucking mental as, as some of the people we've spoken to? Have I budged you on anything at all? I, I really am curious, like from a good uh, goodwill perspective. No, I don't think so. Damn. Okay. You're basically oh, you saying like me down, man. there are problems with capitalism that ca like I mean the Marxist point of view is that capitalism has inherent contradictions that will necessarily cause the dissolution of capitalism, right? That's like a big mm -hmm. Marxist yeah, claim. Yeah. I don't know if these empirically are even true. Obviously, well, we have no, I told you they are empirically true. I can give you the study. Okay, I, you don't have any studies that everybody agrees shows that capitalism will necessarily collapse. The idea that like boom bust cycles are inherent in capitalism isn't evidence that capitalism will necessarily collapse. This is why we have things like central banking and monetary policy to try to combat these things, right? Like, so, so I mean, like, so I don't know if capitalism is inevitably doomed or if we can use extra policies to remedy this. So things like monetary policy, for instance, or other types of policies. Um, so, so yeah, and then I mean, everything else is just like we have no idea what a communist or socialist world would look like. So I mean, I. Don't, I can't really have an opinion about that, I guess, but... I mean, well, like I said to you, dude, you can't, you know, uh, you can't implement policies to, to bring out technological advancement and competition in capitalism. These, these are, like, really fundamental things just in the mode of production. And, and all of the examples that Marx brings up that I haven't even mentioned are, again, so fundamental that you can't just make laws to... to I mean, Marx didn't Marx way. literally think that like like weaving looms would cause like the entirety of like civilization to like stop working? Like, didn't Marx theorize a long time ago that we would run out of jobs for people to do because industrialization was making labor so efficient? And I mean, that's not even remotely true. And we're at we're at levels of industrialization that are impossible for him to have ever imagined. So I, I mean, like it seems like that uh, I, is this the lump of labor fallacy? I think it might be called. But the idea that like oh no, once our you know modes become so efficient, um, we're no longer going to have jobs for people. That doesn't seem to have happened yet. Like. Well, I'm, I, I can't speak to those predictions you mentioned about Marx. I'm not familiar with them. But in regards to, you know, everybody becoming unemployed, we do kind of have that. It looks like we have that being thought about more in the mainstream with people like Andrew Yang and stuff who are saying we need a universal basic income to deal with an automation crisis. But again, the communist perspective, instead of just paying these people who are now unemployed and literally do not have any purpose to work, we just reduce the amount of time we have to work in general. We, we focus on, like, you know, human need rather than uh, fulfilling the, the needs of, of capital, because it's just this amorphous social blob which really dictates all actions in, in our society and our lives, that, that but it doesn't have to. Okay. <laughs> Sorry, when, when, you, when you say okay in that, in that meager tone, it's just like... I, well, because like, if I, I presuppose like all the things that you presuppose, then I agree with you. Capitalism is inherently I, doomed, so something... That capitalism is 100% going to cause like a massive implosion because the boom-bust cycle is going to lead to people being massively starved or whatever, and then after that we have to go to either fascism or some form of like worker-organized like society. Like, I mean, like if I accept that, if I... I accept... thought I set that up pretty well from first principles. Like that crashes are built into capitalism yeah but a crash being built into something it doesn't logically follow that that system is necessarily going to collapse afterwards right we've survived crashes before much worse than the ones yeah, that we've yeah, had totally. recently okay that, that's fair enough but how how did we survive the great depression with, with a world war and fascism and, and well like and that. we changed like, our monetary policy look at how absolutely fucking horrible okay, yeah that, after but like that's not that's that's not how everything like, works things are in a response to other things sure but I, but I mean, like, look at how horrible the 2007 crash was. People were saying, like, fuck, this is another Great Depression. And, like, within a decade, because of the insane amount of monetary policy that we enacted, we were able to catch up. There's still people that are hurting, of course, or minority groups, especially black people that were disproportionately affected by that. But, I mean, I think we bounced back pretty fucking well. Like, yeah, we still have a lot of problems, but people were literally calling for the Great Depression 2.0 post-2007, and it didn't happen. We Our monetary policy fucking kicked ass and, like, got that shit, okay, like, revved okay. up again. I, I, so, I, I mean, get what you're saying. No, I do get that point. <laughs> Uh, that you know, what if what if we just deal with these crashes as they come? We recover from we we recover from them. We enjoy the the booms in between, even though we haven't actually had a boom this time, and we're probably gonna have another crash pretty soon. But we we just deal with that as it comes. We make the policies, and we just do that forever. I, I, okay, but if we take again this falling rate of profit thing, you know, this, this the point is is that you're only in my uh, perspective 
taking the car down the road. Because, well, I don't understand why your falling rate of profit is important. Like just because you're making less yeah, profit per item, if you sell more items, then it's fine. Or if you're able to exactly. manufacture- Exactly, so, so well, how the how sorry. So then how the fuck do you keep selling more and more and more of, of one item that, that people don't necessarily need? Imagine you if you created a widget, okay? And you sold that widget and that um, and, and that widget like became so efficient. I don't know, maybe you would sell like millions of those widgets. Like, do you think that's impossible to do? I'm sorry, <laughs> could you, could you? What, like what if one? widgets become like so, like so easy to, to make that you just start selling tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of these widgets? Why do people need that many widgets though? That it comes a point where widget production gets more and more uh, efficient. You can make more and more, and you're trying to sell more and more. But people only ever need a certain number of widgets. Yeah, because because be you want to pause because you want to pause where we're at right now. No, 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 no. This yes, wait, wait, wait. Listen, what? what no, because no, no, this isn't talking about what I want to do. But I want to implement. Listen, society. okay, this wait, wait. I can because I can give real examples of why you're so wrong. Okay. Why would anybody need to be able to make hundreds of transistors? That's crazy. Like a few transistors is enough to do some pretty basic things. Well, guess what? A microprocessor today has billions of transistors. If this was a widget, you would have stopped making these when we were in the, the triple digits of them. Why would we ever need more than that? And I'm sure I could find a million different examples of things that we produce a massive amount of because we're able to do things with amazing technologies that didn't exist a long time ago. Dude, I, again, we made this point before, right? About, oh, well, we would just stop making semiconductors and that would be that and we'd never make another again. You know, maybe at first we would, but then someone would come along and say, hey, if we made a shit ton of these, we could make microprocessors and they sound pretty great. Then you would get to making the microprocessors. But that's not how that works. You have to incrementally improve not your production. Not under capitalism, no. But no, like under anything. Nobody is ever going to say like, oh, well, you know, I can make 10 transistors. Ooh, dude, I bet if we made 20 billion of these, we could make an i9. You have to incrementally ramp up your productions and get to things where that are more affordable to make these little jumps in order to do it. Like, we didn't yeah, start out with the iPhone the X, right? You're, 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 talk you're, you're talking about the, like, prices and how much it costs to do that. And, and again, like, that's talking about within the confines of capitalism. But if you didn't have, like you know, having to worry about prices and having to worry about having a business stay afloat for as long as it takes to have a microprocessor appear in, in our like consciousness, then then yeah, sure. But like, that, that's not, we, we're trying to literally just do away with those very, the, those fetters altogether, right? Uh, I, 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 I don't know. I totally disagree with all of this, but I mean, I don't know. I, all right, man, all right. Listen, I, I mean, love if, you. If you you're not you're not like a screaming moron or whatever. I know. So like sometimes I get real mad at like the people I talk to. I don't think you're like a I don't think you're like a horrible person or anything. Okay. I love you and I. Oh well, I, I appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Are you a Brexiter? You are right. You're pro Brexit. Oh, where'd you get that from? Because you're a Corbyn supporter. <laughs> Dude, I, I I'm a physics student, uh, so I understand that if I ever want to do any research in my life, I, I kind of need the fucking EU. Okay. All right. Just yeah. curious. All right. Well, hey, I love you. <laughs> but, buddy. but I mean. It, yeah, we could talk about Brexit, but that's the whole thing. <laughs> okay, yeah. be careful. All right, well, um, I, 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 I enjoyed the conversation, so thanks for that. Yeah, but, all right. Um, yeah. Thanks yeah. a lot. <clears throat> Corbyn is not pro Brexit. I thought that generally, um, I thought that generally his party was anti Brexit, but he was like, a, he kind of like stuck his neck out and was pro Brexit. Oh, he cha did he change to a Remainer now? Wait, oh, we got a lot of disagreement. <laughs> we got a lot of disagreement in chat. I thought that labor in the UK was generally anti-Brexit, that labor in the UK was generally Remain, but Corbyn himself was pro-Brexit. On July 2019, Corbyn reversed his position on Brexit, coming out in full support of calling a second referendum on the issue. Oh, holy shit, okay, well, he's a crypto-Brexiteer. <laughs> okay. Fuck, I, I'm so ready to be done with the left here. But it's not fair when I say, hey, your system failed to address this or failed to do this for you to point and go, well, these are still some problems under...